Hello everyone! The flu is back with a vengeance, it's literally everywhere. And among hundreds of patients with a fever that you are going to see in the next couple of months, the vast majority will have influenza. But there will always be patients with bacterial infections like strep throat or bacterial pneumonia, even sepsis. How do you recognize them in time? Because everyone will look pretty sick. Influenza is brutal, this is what sets it apart from most other viral respiratory tract infections. People with the flu can look as sick as people with staphylococcal sepsis or even meningococcemia, at least in the beginning, with a brutal onset, high fever, chills, rigors, muscle pain. And to make matters worse, even though influenza is a respiratory infection, early on in the first couple of days, respiratory symptoms can be very mild or even absent, so you are only left with these impressive general symptoms. And to make things even more difficult for us clinicians, influenza actually predisposes patients to severe bacterial infections, especially streptococcal and staphylococcal infections like bacterial pneumonia. And in influenza season, we need to make our decisions quickly because there are just too many patients. So let's keep this simple. When you have a patient with a high fever in influenza season, the most basic question is, is this simple uncomplicated influenza or is it something else, something that will require hospitalization, antibiotics or both? So, if I am to decide that this probably is simple uncomplicated influenza, four basic criteria need to be met. Number one, the duration of fever has to be three days or less. Now, of course, we all know, everyone who's had influenza knows that Fever can last for more than three days, but usually there will be some signs of improvement after 72 hours. If there are none, I'm beginning to suspect that this either isn't influenza or I'm dealing with a complication of influenza, meaning something bacterial like bacterial pneumonia, bacterial sinusitis, something like that. So this is the rule number one, three days of fever or less. The second rule is there should be at least some respiratory symptoms. As I mentioned earlier, in the clinical presentation of influenza, general symptoms dominate. High fever, muscle pain, rigors, chills, while respiratory symptoms can often be absent or very mild. That being said, I like to see some respiratory symptoms. A little bit of coryza, a little bit of dry cough, something. Now, of course, the mere presence of respiratory symptoms does not automatically mean that the patient is not seriously ill. But coryza does usually mean that they have a viral respiratory tract infection of some kind. If there are absolutely no respiratory symptoms, I'm beginning to think that this might not be influenza and that I need to broaden to expand my differential diagnosis. Okay, number three, a patient with uncomplicated influenza should never be septic. If you've seen my videos before, you know what I'm going to say next. Always assess the patient's vital signs, especially patients with a high fever. Every single time, no exception. Because people with influenza will look sick, but there should be no signs of organ dysfunction absolutely none. So, no rapid breathing, no low O2 saturation, no low blood pressure, no tachycardia, no confusion, nothing. If something is abnormal, this is either a complication of influenza, maybe bacterial pneumonia, or it's not influenza to begin with. This ability to recognize serious conditions as early as possible is paramount for any clinician, and I know how easy it is to make a mistake. This is why I created a series of short, practice-oriented lectures for clinicians who have to make quick decisions based on very limited information. This course will provide you with a logical framework that will help you make better decisions with more confidence and you will be less likely to miss a serious diagnosis. Okay, criterion number four. There should be no obvious signs of another diagnosis, like a characteristic rash or swollen tonsils with a lot of pus, painful urination, anything. But you will notice that if you take a decent history and decent physical examination. As a side note, remember that gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea don't necessarily exclude the diagnosis of influenza. Now, this varies from season to season, but some strains are more prone to cause gastrointestinal symptoms than others. For example, H1N1 
often caused vomiting and diarrhea in certain age groups. And since influenza is a viral respiratory tract infection, make sure that you pay close attention to your patient's respiratory tract. So examine their throat. Many patients will have a sore throat, but when you take a look at it, it may look a little bit reddish, but usually the physical findings won't be very impressive. You should not see swollen tonsils with a lot of pus. If you see this, well, this probably isn't influenza. It's either another viral respiratory tract infection like adenovirus, for example, or it could be strep throat. More on the diagnosis of strep throat in a separate video. Also, of course, you will auscultate the lungs. Needless to say, in uncomplicated influenza, the findings should be perfectly normal. So if all of these four criteria are met, your patient probably does have influenza. At least this is how it used to be. Nowadays, we have COVID-19 complicating things a little bit. It's essentially like having another influenza. And clinically, these two infections are virtually impossible to tell apart. Not to mention that co-infections are also possible. Fortunately, we have relatively reliable, rapid diagnostic tests that are widely available for COVID. For influenza, our diagnostic capabilities are still relatively limited in well-equipped hospitals. You may have PCR, but in most settings, you don't have a quick, reliable test for influenza. And this is another reason why knowing the clinical presentation is so important. But when you are not sure, some basic and widely available diagnostic tests can help you a little bit, like the CBC and chest X-ray. In influenza, in the CBC, you will usually find a normal absolute leukocyte count maybe with lymphopenia, very mild thrombocytopenia, and perhaps monocytosis. This is typical. You should certainly not see high leukocytosis with neutrophilia. If you see this, again, it's either not influenza or you are dealing with a complication of influenza-like bacterial pneumonia. If you work in a well-equipped hospital where every patient gets a million tests the minute they set foot in the emergency department, then CRP can help you a little bit. In uncomplicated influenza, CRP should not cross the level of 30 to, let's say, 40 milligrams per liter. If it's higher than that, and especially if it approaches 100, uncomplicated influenza becomes much less likely. Of course, in the differential diagnosis of influenza, our main concern is always pneumonia. So when in doubt, order a chest x-ray, especially if the patient has been febrile for a little bit too long or if they look sicker than they should be. Now, what kind of pneumonia is it? Is it primary viral pneumonia? Is it bacterial pneumonia or something else? Well, you can learn all about that in my next video. Please share this video with your colleagues and students if you find it useful, if you think you learned something that will help you in practice. Thank you for watching, good luck out there and take care.